Hi, everybody. Welcome. This is a special video today. We're going to be uh, talking a little bit more about the Know Thyself program, but specifically about how it actually came to be. How did Bonnie actually find these teachings? Um, how is it related to Jesus? <laughs> and we're going to hear, uh, you know, just the history of it, because it's been a program that Bonnie has taught since um, 2002. And there was a period of time where she stopped teaching it. And she brought it back now because she feels it's really necessary that people need this. And it, I think it's a very interesting history. And then we're also going to be talking about maybe some uh, stories, like testimonial type stories of uh, the students she had, the experiences that they had in this program. And who else, who knows what else we talk about today? Uh, we could, we could just <laughs> uh, end up, you know, after all of that, we could just, you know, talk about maybe some other things that come to mind. And Bonnie Sertor is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and a founder of Spiritual Acceleration. I'm Cynthia, um, helping with today's video and asking questions. So Bonnie, do you want to talk about uh, just how did the teachings of Know Thyself come about? You talk about how you can't find this anywhere else. And mm -hmm. these are at the absolute, right? They're not just belief systems. They're right, the absolute. Right. So could you talk right. about like all of that, the history and everything? Yeah, I mean, I, I have a lot of experience in uh, going to different locations, like uh, I've been to Egypt, and I had major experiences in Egypt, I've been to Israel several times, had major experiences there. Uh, but basically, for me, you know, there is an ancient know thyself, okay, there's, there's ancient teachings of know thyself, some of them are pretty right on, some of them are not. So for me, because I can always feel and sense when something's true, and when it isn't, um, for me, I have to find the truth. I have to find the absolute. Otherwise, I can't embody it or I can't bring it forth. I can't even talk about it. So what, for me, I had experiences. I just want to actually, I want to say, I want to back up. I just want to make it really clear. I was never a religious person and I'm still not a religious person. Okay. I am a spiritual being seeking truth, seeking enlightenment, seeking liberation from our suffering. So way back in the day, <laughs> this was in 1987, I believe it is. And uh, I had a friend who he would spend a lot of time in Yosemite and a lot of time connecting. He, he worked a lot with uh, Mother Mary. So he was visiting, it was him and my daughter. And he was visiting, he was sharing. And back then I used to channel, I channeled a being called Taz. And that was the only being I would channel because I wanted pure, pure, pure energy. So when Mark was saying in, about Mother Mary, I just had this knowing, oh, I need to bring this, bring this energy in. So unbeknownst to me, I just open up and here comes this consciousness. Next thing I know, I'm hearing Mark and my daughter crying, sobbing. I'm opening, I'm seeing through my eyes, I'm looking down at people and I literally know, oh, here we go. I'm on, I'm on the cross. Okay. So the being, the consciousness of Christ came into my body and showed me the, the energy, showed me the frequencies, showed me the visions of the peoples. And I got to experience, like directly looking through those eyes, the experience of the emotion that this being was, was experiencing and looking at these people. Now, this was early in that uh, crucifixion. It wasn't the last, you know, towards the very end when the body's in excruciating pain. But at that time, all I felt was pure, unconditional love, compassion, understanding. Nothing did I feel of blame, hatred, resent, nothing. It was pure, pure. So what happened for me, having that experience is, I wanted to know what's the truth here, okay? Because, you know, you have all these teachings and Bible stuff and people interpreting things and bringing forth messages and all that. And I just felt that there was more to this than what humanity understands or knows. And you have to keep in mind, all uh, the teachings were not written during those times. They were written, you know, many years after, sometimes a couple hundred years after. The only... Uh, manuscripts they actually found of those times was through Mary Magdalene. Okay, so she actually had teachings that were written, but Jesus's teachings were not written down. Um, and then when they were, they were, you know, written by who knows who. But um, 
fast moving forward, I um, I had a car accident. I went over the very thing that I was dreading in my life. I'm fearing I never want to go over an embankment. Well, what happens? I get hit from behind. Um, I had seen a car, so I turned my wheel because I knew something bad was going to happen. Anyway, I got hit from behind, went over an embankment, rolled and rolled. I ended up needing to, I saw a, a, a chiropractor and that chiropractor was from Israel and he was going back. So after my treatment, we kind of connected. Then I went to visit Well, we started going to all the places. And so I would go to different locations. The first place I go to was a wailing wall and had direct experience, the being Jesus presented. I went to the area where he broke bread and, you know, it's all roped off now. You can't touch the rock anymore, but I, we were sitting there and all of a sudden he presents. I start crying and he goes, why are you crying? You should be rejoicing at our reunion, you know? So anyway, there was just so many different pieces that I was being shown and the different areas that we went throughout Israel. We know we went many, 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 many places. And again, I spent three, three months there a month at a time. Uh, you know, I'd be there for a month and then I'd leave and come back. So I did that three times. So I had quite a bit of direct experience. And for me, I do have the knowing. I'm connected with my knowing. I, I can feel when something is true and when it isn't. And that's one reason why, as many of you know, I didn't study with other people is because if I felt distortion or something wasn't right or something was off, I wasn't going to go there. I wasn't going to be with that person or to me, I wasn't going to study with them. So for me, it's always been direct. It's always been get, go direct, find the real truth, find the answers and then bring it forth. So after all of that time in, in doing that, I created a program called Know Thyself. And that program, I taught that program in 2002. And what, what, that was a two-year program back then. And we would meet for a whole weekend. You know, we'd come in for Saturday and Sunday. And we would be doing all kinds of really potent, powerful experiences. And uh, that, <laughs> so now we have a, a nine-month program trying to cram everything in. We're not in person. But back then, we literally did go through a lot of emotional stuff and helping people to really anchor in these higher level teachings. And for me, it's really about being accountable and responsible and really understanding that we're really not victims, that we really are souls evolving and that we are the ones, you know, co-creating our reality. And it's all about the soul waking up, the soul literally expanding in consciousness and, and evolving consciously to end one's suffering. So that's why for me, it's like, this is vital information, vital teachings. But if you don't have them, you're just going to go about life going, you did that to me. I'm the victim. Poor me. You know, it's like, it never ends. So in order to end the suffering in these misperceptions of reality, we have to wake up to who we really are, what we're really doing here. So um, that program, you know, we would have really big things happening. And I do want to bring something to awareness. Like, for example, one of the things that that I talk about and will be teaching is how to use one's reactions to access your subconscious. So first of all, you have to wake up to you're having a reaction. OK, so that one was really intense. I know. I mean, what would happen for people, Cynthia, would be like we're so ingrained in we have a reaction. I'm reacting because you did something. You're the reason why I'm reacting. Why are you doing this to me? Okay. So to change people's understanding and misperceptions about their reactions and that their reactions are actually the doorway in to the subconscious and the fact that if you didn't have already a wound inside of you, there'd be no reaction <laughs> and then waking up to all of that, okay? So helping people to, to realize that, okay, you've called this in at soul levels, you've called it in. So this is some of the things I will be teaching is how are you co-creating? How are you uh, doing things and living in a way that you're actually the one creating your reality, that you're really not a victim? Okay, how do you wake people up to that? Well, you have to give them 
true teachings. You have to demonstrate and show them how this all works. So coming back to reactions, I remember one time, <laughs> this one, one of the, there was a couple and the man had cheated on her. They weren't married, but he had cheated on her. And I kept trying to get her to recognize that she was having a reaction, of, uh, you know, that he cheated, of course, of course, right? And trying to trying to help her to recognize that, okay, there's a co-creation here. You already have some kind of betrayal. There's already something in you that you're trying to unravel. And the only way that's going to happen is if it gets activated and now you're feeling it, but you're, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to go in and unravel it rather than keep blaming, blaming, blaming. You did this, you hurt me. Okay. So it actually took a couple of weekends for her to finally stop making it about him. It's not that I'm not saying that what he did wasn't hurtful to her. I'm not saying it was right or wrong. What I'm saying is if we want to evolve, if we want to end our suffering, then we can't, we can't keep playing this asleep human game of, you know, you hurt me. I'm going to hurt you. The karma we've been doing this for thousands and thousands of lifetimes. And it's time for this to come to an end. But the only way it's going to come to an end is if people understand what we're really doing here. Why, what is this teaching really about? It's not about winning in a court of law, who's right or who's wrong. It's not about that at all. It's about the evolution of our soul. Okay. So finally, she was able to recognize, oh, okay. Yep, I'm, I'm, I co-created this because there's a wound inside of me, some kind of belief, some kind of betrayal that I've been trying to unravel all of my life. I've always experienced some kind of betrayal. So here it is again. And so by going in to her, by surrendering to her experience, okay, of that feeling of betrayal, she literally was able to drop into these older wounds that's been carried over for lifetimes and dropped into that feeling of being betrayed and all of the heartache and the and the pain and anguish and the, the, the dense and helpless and hopeless. So she went through that. When she did, it just, the, you know, like the thought of him cheating on her no longer had a big old charge in her body. But what she really got clear on, which was really cool, and it wasn't out of malice or hatred or anger or wanting to hurt, she got clear that this really wasn't the relationship she wanted, that she wasn't really in love with this man. And so what happened was, is she did in the relationship and it wasn't long afterwards that she met somebody else. Now, remember, this is back in 2002. She's with that same man to this day, very happy, happily married. That would have never happened if she hadn't cleared up that old wound that was being reactivated. So what I'm saying is there's teachings here that you're not going to get anywhere, okay? There's teachings that, that are gonna help people to understand how to navigate your life, how to face what's within so that you can change what you're experiencing in your world so that you begin to experience a more world that feels more joyful, more happy, more fulfilling, rather than always the trauma and the victim. Why is this always happening to me? I mean, how many people can say, wow, I'm just waiting for the other shoe to drop, or, you know, now I'm on guard waiting for something bad to happen, or when is going to happen again? Or why does the same old thing keep happening over and over and over? Okay. If you want to end the suffering, and you want to wake up, then you have to wake up to the truth. You have to wake up to who we are, what we're doing, what, what that all entails, the soul dance that we're doing with everyone, and the, the absolute fact, there are no victims. We are co-creating everything, everything. And it's important for people to finally grasp that and understand it, not just, okay, yeah, yeah, there's no victims, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, to really get it and understand it so you begin to live your life in a different way. So that, that Know Thyself program, I mean, it was intense, it was phenomenal. And like I said, it was two years and people's lives changed drastically as they started waking up. They could, you can't play the victim game when you realize you called it in. 
you co-created these experiences, okay? And when we live life in that way, our expand, our, our awareness, our expansion, our growth, our spiritual evolution begins to happen exponentially. You know, it's like no longer is it taking years and years to get through one particular issue. It's like, boom, boom. Now, it, whoa, got that one. And then it's like, whoa, all right. Now I feel shifted. Oh, here comes the next piece. Yeah, I want this. I want to change this. I don't want to suffer and live like that anymore because now I know I'm the one creating it, co-creating it, doing the soul dance and calling it in. So, you know, it's about responsibility, accountability, and realizing that we are amazing beings and that we really do create our lives 100%. You know, Bonnie, I'm glad that you talked about that story again, because you've talked about it before, but I, I don't think you really emphasized the huge shift uh -huh. that that lady made. And mm -hmm. that's something that sometimes I feel like maybe you you don't really uh, aren't able to articulate as clearly sometimes as like the the real practical benefit of of the work that you do just generally not just nail nail thyself and yeah. I, I think for some people they they don't they miss that part but <clears throat> right, right that was a huge thing that if she didn't clear that then she could have gone in another relationship and oh. got cheated on again and she would I, have. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. So yes, but she was able to with your teachings and and being able to go and surrender to the emotions. Now that's just never going to happen, not even in future lifetimes. It's done. Right, right. And done. I think that's a piece that people really need to know is if you really want to just stop that cycle of all the different things that keep showing up in your life that having these teachings that really like help you to understand how you're actually doing and how you're actually recreating things. Um, right. That's so fundamental to then how do you shift it after that? You know, like once you understand right. that stuff, then you're you're yeah. able to really take that and and utilize everything that Bonnie teaches um, to really make those changes so they don't happen again ever. Right. So I do want to say too, just so people understand, you know how we always feel these attachments, whether it's attachment to relationship or, mat or material items or attachments to how things go or how they look, or like, for example, being in the kitchen, two women cooking, one does it one way. To, okay. If it's your kitchen, you're, some people get upset. You know what I mean? It's like got to be done a certain way. Things have to be done this way. Oh, wait, toilet paper has to go this way. And rather than this way, I mean, there's all these things that we have these attachments to. Okay. And in my journey and as well as knowing many, many peoples on the same journey, what happens is our bodies <laughs> like literally let go of all attachment, okay? The feeling like, like I have a cool car, it's a little 94 Miata, but if I lost it, I lost it. I, it's like my body no longer has, it has to be this way, I'm attached to this, you know, it needs to look this way. I want that done this way. It's like everything lets go. So we let go of our attachments. We also let go of all of our judgments and finding fault. So just imagine what would life be like if you were no longer judging people, finding fault with people, how much more relaxed in your body you would be. This is what happens with these teachings. We start to wake up. We start to let go. We start to unravel and heal and clear. And pretty soon it's like we're able to be in life in a much different way. With Because when you think about attachments and all the energy that goes with that, all that emotional energy that you got to have it your way, you got to be right, okay? Or you're judging people. I mean, people don't understand how frequently they're judging people. I'm, I would imagine that every time they look at anybody, they're finding, <laughs> they're finding some kind of fault or judging something. Okay, in some way. What if that just wasn't happening anymore? What if all those attachments just weren't happening anymore? What it, you know, it's like you can't know what that's like until you're free from it. And that's what happens. We get free from these attachments and beliefs. And what also happens is the false ego, the false self dissolves. Because we are identified with that. That's who we think we are. In these teachings, those false self, false ego starts to fall away, start to dissolve. And the more true authentic being that we really are starts to shine forth. 
which is what we're here to do. Bonnie, I noticed that some people in your community, when they ask about know thyself, they always ask, like, is this, do you learn training? Like, do you learn how to do Bonnie's work? Or they ask about, uh, do you get clearings in this? And I always say that, you know, the training, the, this isn't for training how to do your work, but even people who are in accelerators that haven't taken know thyself, it, I feel like even them are missing a lot of, of understanding uh, certain things that r- are really pivotal in their own life and in helping their clients. And that actually is right. something that you right. learn to know thyself. And do you want to talk about how they complement each other? Right, they do. I mean, you know, getting clearings and healings is paramount in someone's evolution. It really is because you're not going to just shift and change just by hoping and wishing. You have to take action. So our, our accelerators are trained to take action and help and assist to move energy. And we still have to understand who we are, how we co-create, what, what are we really doing? What's the soul's evolution? How do we carry trauma forth? I mean, all these things are, are vitally important to know and understand in our own journey. Um, and again, with Know Thyself, it isn't about teaching or learning how to do the work. That's what Foundations is about. That covers that. This is nothing to do with Foundations. You're not learning how to do the work that I do. You're learning about who you are. What are you really doing here? How can you best utilize your lifetime to evolve spiritually rather than stay stuck in misperceptions and beliefs that are simply not true, that you're disempowered, that people have power over you, that you're a victim to life, that God is punishing you. You can never evolve if you want to hold on to those beliefs. So know thyself and the work. They definitely go hand in hand. They're perfectly, you know, going together. It's like the perfect combination because you're not only getting freer and clearer from within, you're understanding higher level concepts, teachings that have to do with extremely high level consciousness, which, you know, like for me, being in Israel, being in Egypt, experiencing the things that I have directly and knowing directly, seeing things without, you know, without distortion or other people's beliefs or misperceptions, but going direct, you know, I have pulled in and anchored in these teachings, these concepts, these understandings in a way that it's in me. I live it. I don't go blaming any, but I don't care what happens. You mean, you know, a big thing happened to me and there was nothing in me, not even for an instant, that wanted to blame anybody. I knew immediately, oh, I called this in. <laughs> All righty hey, then, there we go. You shifted to that so quickly too. What, right. what happened I mean, to you? I, you? It only took you like, I don't even know, a week or something, or right? Yeah. But well, it was such a big, big thing. You shifted through it so fast. Do you want to talk oh, about yeah, this a little was, bit this, about that? Yeah, part? this this was a, yeah. So maybe if people don't know, I got scammed for like, $69,000, which is about almost wiped out SA. Okay. And um, yeah, so my whole, <laughs> so the body, just so you know, the body itself was traumatized. Okay. Like the whole body. But what happened was I literally saw my ego. I saw my energy shatter. It just shattered more of the ego, false self shattered. Now keep in mind that my desire, what I've been asking for is that my heart just be open. I want to have unconditional love for everything and everyone, no matter what. Okay. So that's my journey. So having that experience, knowing full well, there is no one to blame. I didn't want to hurt anybody, blame anybody. I knew this was all about me and I took it in that. So what I did was <laughs> I jumped in my vehicle because my body was tweaked. All right. That's a fact. But another part of me was in in a complete state of knowing, at peace, connection, okay? So the body had to kind of catch up with where I'm living in my awareness. So I got in my car, I drove, talked to my higher levels, and they gave me the, the, let me know, yeah, we had to do it that way in order to get you to get your attention. Um, But basically, I went through, I let the body go through the trauma of it. I, I went through the, whatever energies were still there. And it was over. 
Now, for me, it was just about, you know, just rebuilding the foundation of SA. I didn't really want to get a loan, but I would have, but I, I, I didn't. And so just rebuilding, building that. And what it did is it, it made me more in my body, but it also put me more in, in my business, if that makes sense. Like I'm more a part of my own business rather than before. I just wanted everybody else to handle stuff. But now I'm like more of a part of it. So now things are moving in a different direction. But my, my going through it, this could have take, I could have never gotten through it. If I had been someone asleep, this would have traumatized me probably for years. And maybe I would have never gotten over it ever in my life fully. And I'm, I'm telling them that's for real, for real, the truth. Okay. So it's behind me. It's, if that's over, I'm moving forward. I've got, you know, now we're moving forward in a different way. And had I not known any of this, had I been like your normal mainstream asleep human, I'd so poor me, you know, poor me. Look what happened to me <laughs> and all the God must be punishing me or I'm being tortured. So yeah, it was huge. And yet I moved, I did, I literally moved through it in a, in a matter of, of a week, Cynthia. That's awesome, Bonnie. I, I do want to ask again about, uh, you know, the Jesus, Israel, and Egypt, because I think that's really interesting. Um, so were these teachings actually taught in, in, like, ancient Egypt? Was it, like, a mainstream thing back then? Oh, I think okay. that's it would be interesting right. to know. Or were yeah, they, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I, you guys, so I do have memory. I was, I absolutely was high priestess, like, serious high priestess. I was an initiate. That means I was seeking enlightenment back then, okay? And <clears throat> there's all these temples that, that, that in each temple, you face something different. So, you know, we would go to the temples and have experiences um, utilizing the energy of the temple. So at the temple of Isis, there are may, some really big stuff happened for at the temple of Isis. Uh, that was one of the first places we went to as a group. And so we're out on the Temple of Isis and exploring. And then, and then there, the group was gathering because there was a, a, a man that was giving information. And what, when the, I threw what they're called, they're the people that tell you they live there, they're Egyptian, they tell you the history or whatever. So a, a guide, a guide. <laughs> so I'm walking towards the group, me and another friend were walking towards the group. And all of a sudden, I'm almost falling over with nausea. I don't know what's going on. But I it's not like, it's not like I'm having something like of this, this reality, something bigger was happening. So we walk over and I have to sit down. I'm almost like, Oh, my goodness, something something's up. So then he's saying that that temple was moved a quarter, the temple was a quarter mile away when they did the, the river, the Nile, they had to move everything. So they moved everything brick by brick to make it exactly the same. That's what was up. The original energy of that temple was somewhere else. So what happened was I was being asked to move, to move the energy of that, the alignment to where the temple is now. It, only a quarter mile, but in my mind, I'm going, there's no way I can do that. This is an impossible thing you're asking me to do, okay? And yet, when you look at it, like if you look at the sky, the stars, you look down on planet Earth, trying to move a quarter of a mile, it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing. So we did it. I did the whole group thing. I said, okay, we're going to pull that energy. We're going to align it right here with the temple. So we did. And everything changed. The whole energy of the temple changed. We, when we were up and around, people were like, really, you know, like the vibrational frequency, everything was higher. So that happened many times. But for me, what was also happening is going to these places in the temples, I was like transported back in time. Okay. So I, I the place where they're facing your fear, there's like these wells and they would have crocodiles down in the wells and the initiates were meant to go into the water and face their fear. Okay. That was one of the, one of the things. So in each temple I'm, I'm seeing and sensing, Oh, this is what there, here's here. This is what happened. Oh, this is my final initiation. I went to the sarcophagus. Yes. I actually did that back in 1994. Uh, I, I did a, an experience of going back in time and I went into the temples because I already knew that I had a connection with, with um, Egypt. 
But what was happening though is, you know, you have to understand in those ancient times, 8,000, 10,000, 15,000 years ago, their belief systems, what they were doing were different than what we understand and know now. So for me, it was that place of receiving, understanding what the whole journey was about, what I was experiencing. And I forgot this part to tell you, I was shown when I was in the sarcophagus, I was shown creation. I was shown how things were created. And they talk about the, the big boom or whatever you call it. And it was awareness. It was conscious awareness, the awareness that actually became aware of its own awareness and that created the energy frequency that started everything so i was shown all of that i was shown that the soul <laughs> i was being shown people like battles on horses fighting arm cut off things like that the soul right above doesn't really care what's happening to you physically doesn't care what you're going through it's all about you know the the experience and having direct experience in everything. But what I was also shot, saw was people grab hold of those experiences and make them bad and wrong rather than, oh, it's an experience. The soul just wants to know itself in this way and let it go, let it be done, have that experience be done. But no, we hold on to the emotion. So that emotion is what keeps us recycling the same old, same old, same old, okay? So, it's like those, those experiences in the temples and also the experiences being in Israel. I mean, this was at totally different times. Like I went to Egypt uh, in 2012, 2011, the first time. And, you know, I was doing Israel back in 1997 in that, that time period. And, you know, so I, there's like, there's diff, diff gaps, but all of these, all these experiences you know, have really helped me to truly get even a deeper understanding and a deeper knowing of, you know, the true teachings and what this is really about. So, yeah, I had major experiences in these places and saw and understood things and had realizations and downloads and all kinds of things to help me bring forth what it is that I'm bringing forth. So I have a question about you talked about the initiates have to go through those tests. When they pass those tests, is that what happens? They they have a new realization of truth. Is that, I'm, I'm trying to understand that part. Okay, let's just use let's just use going in this good, let's use going into the the well with the crocs, the crocodiles. Okay, so this is about facing your fear. All right, so the initiates would go into those wells with the Crocs. And it was all about, you know, the, of course, you're going to be terrified, you're going to be fearing for your life. All right. So what would what it's all about is you face your see back then it was about facing your fear and going through it to to arrive at a different place in consciousness and awareness. Okay, which is what I do what my team does by doing clearings as we shift energies take the fear out so you arrive at different consciousness, okay? In the temple, just so you understand, initiates, there was only an elite beings. The masses were not a part of this. You have to understand. This was only for the elite, okay? The high level elite. And these initiates would go in and have each, each temple was for something different. And you had to pass that. You had to go through that. Let's just say, for example, back to the Crocs thing, you go in and let's just say a person couldn't, and let's just say they got attacked, they got killed, all right? Or let's just say that they didn't get killed, but they didn't, they didn't go through the, the intensity of their terror and their fear, okay? Fear of death, fear that there's going to be, you know, something happened to them. Then they had the opportunity to do it again. But, you know, you don't get to go to the next temple until you master whatever that temple was that you, that you completed, okay? So... <clears throat> you know, there's lots of different uh, experiences and, and all the different, like I said, the different temples are different, different things, different things for the initiates that they're going to go through. And again, if you didn't pass it, you don't move on. So not many people really woke up. So the initiates, those in the high level places, the initiates were like a tail or um, like a rope thing on their side. Those are where the ones who came through the, through the sarcophagus, lived through the sarcophagus 
and survived that and came through with a greater awareness, greater understanding, you know what I mean? So they, they're not holding on to their beliefs and their misperceptions and their fears and all that emotional traumas that humanity continues to maintain within. So I have a memory of dying in a sarcophagus. This came in during meditation. But what was I supposed to do in there? How was I supposed to survive? Like, I don't, how did I die in there? Or suff- how would people die in there? Suffocate, you suffocate, okay? <laughs> so what so, happened? You're in you're in there for 72 hours. 72 hours in a sarcophagus field. Okay. When you go in, you you know the intention is is that you can you start slowing everything down. You slow your breath down. You're slowing. This is mastery over physical form. It's pure mastery. Okay. So you slow everything down. Clearly, you didn't do it because you suffocated. I can see it you know, lack of oxygen. (laughs) Uh, Bonnie, you know, you know, what's really funny is before I even had this, um, this came in in a meditation, I actually saw, you know, myself in a sarcophagus, and and I realized I died in there. And but years before that, I used to meditate for hours every day. And I remember two times, or maybe three times, um, I was in such a deep state, and I realized you know, I was in there, for, like I was in meditation for a long time. And then I, at some point I realized I haven't breathed in like, I don't know when the last time I breathed. Right. And I was, a part of me was freaking out my, like, I guess my ego part of me, but then, yeah. and, and that part of me was saying, Cynthia, you better breathe. You know? <laughs> You're going to die. And then there was another part of me that was just still. And it said, don't worry about it. Mm. You're right, fine. right. And then I trusted right. that and I just kept meditating for I don't even know how much longer, maybe an hour or something. Right. And at some yeah. point throughout that, I thought like because I was kind of in and out of like an I guess an altered state. Yeah. And at some point I did take a breath. I re- remember that. But it was like I that happened maybe two or three times in a deep meditative state. And I haven't had since then I haven't experienced that. But I thought it was really weird. Like, how does that even happen? And then later I um I had that like the vision of, of being in the sarcophagus, I didn't connect the two until I found your work later. And then Uh, I saw, I heard you talk about it in a group clearing about the sarcophagus thing. I was like, oh, I bet those are connected. (laughs) But yeah, Yeah. so I guess that was like a, I was able to kind of tap into something I knew how to do, like from back then or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a trip, isn't it? Yeah, Yeah, it is. It is, isn't it? I mean, it really is. I mean, yeah. (laughs) I mean, I mean, I just, it, for me, it was just like, clearly, when I would go into these places, clear, clear, clear memories, you know what I mean? Clear, wow, like, it's like, clearly, and, oh, in the group I was with, this was such a trip. We all, everybody there, everybody on the, on the tour, on the group thing with us, um, this is a group of people that were, you know, they're like, they're, we're, we're doing this kind of thing, we're going to the temples for a reason, and all the everybody's remembering each other. I remember this one, her name's Diane. And she was a little girl, young one, and she was already getting in trouble, but she was already being primed for be, you know, to be in the temples. And she was already getting in trouble. And but I re, you know what I mean? It's like we were all talking about remembering each other. So here we are in these bodies in this time period, talking about who we were, remembering each other. It was such an incredible experience. It was an amazing, loving, heartfelt, joyful, awesome experience. So, I mean, it was just cool just remembering, having a group of people remembering. Everyone's remembering. It was very cool. Would you ever consider doing a retreat in Egypt again, Bonnie, with like with spiritual acceleration? I would, I but it, yeah. well, it, what happened for me was after the last time I went, I felt done, you know what I mean? Um, okay. Yeah, but I mean, if it were to present, I would do it. You know what I'm saying, Cynthia? Like, if that really were coming, of course I would. Of course. Yeah. I'd go with you. Okay. <laughs> we'll bring you back. Oh, so you, what you don't know is everybody got, we went to the the, tent, the, big, the big pyramid, and everyone got to go into the sarcophagus at the top, the king's, you know, the king's chamber. So everyone got to just lay in there in our group. So that was pretty cool. That's really cool, Bonnie. I really enjoy this conversation because I think 
you shared stuff about Know Thyself and the teachings and the program that you never shared like fully before. Yeah. And yeah. I, I think that for me personally, I, I mean, I really like to hear you talk about the history of it, Egypt and Israel. That to me is some of the more interesting things. <laughs> so I hope that other people, you know, got a lot from this. And also, I think it shows how like universal and how timeless these teachings are, because you talk about how these are the absolute and tying yeah. them in with like these teachings of, you know, Jesus, he he obviously knew the, these teachings, otherwise he wouldn't have been in that unconditional loving state when he's on the cross, right? Right. right. And yeah. and of course um, the realization she had in Egypt. I think that this is uh, something that to me is very appealing to, about the No Thyself program is these are very timeless. They're, these are truth. These are what you call absolute teachings absolute, that can really, yeah. really change your life. Like the lady mm-hmm. you talked about um, where she got cheated on, you know, once she moved through it because she she knew what to do and she moved through it. And now that's never going to happen again. This could. Right. Th- think yes. about yes. You think about how your life could change if you're listening. To, are you struggling with money? Are you struggling yeah. with relationships? Are you struggling with your health? These are teachings that could really help you in such a very practical way. And I think that's a part that maybe a lot of people weren't piecing together right. from some of your other talks on it. Right. Um, and then the, the emotional component just is, see, that's the thing. See, for her, let's go back to the woman that her, the boyfriend cheated. You know, for at first she was just like, hey, you know, wanting to blame, uh, attack, whatever. She couldn't take it in. And finally, when she did and she went in and cleared out all these emotional frequencies, even the thought of being, the thought of him cheating, the thought of being betrayed or whatever, there's no more charge in the body. There's no reaction. That's what this is about, is end your suffering by clearing out the emotional frequencies that keep you stuck in mind chatter and blame game and victim and poor me and your mind quiets down, everything shifts and changes. You're no longer, you can't even find the thought, you can't find the reaction. That's liberation, Cynthia. That's liberation. All right. Thank you so much, Bonnie. And if you want to learn more about Know Thyself and sign up for the class, the link is going to be in the description below. There was a period of time where you stopped teaching. Oh, right. Do you want to kind of mention that? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. (laughs) Okay. So I stopped teaching Know Thyself in 2000, the end of 2004. And I did that because, you guys, the thought of new people coming, you know, newbies, innocents, totally asleep, start all over. After two years of getting these people to really just wake up and to really shift and change, and now we're really flowing. Now there's a wakefulness. Now they're on board. The thought of new people and starting all over, I didn't want to do it. I just didn't. I even, I closed down the Renaissance Center of Cynthia and I moved to Arizona. No, actually, I didn't move right away, but I I shut it down because I just couldn't. The thought of starting all over again, I just couldn't do it. And that was what it was all about. I just couldn't. So at years later, okay, this is 2004. Where are we now? 23. <laughs> it's been a little while. Um, I just had the knowing. I felt it. I knew it. And, it, and it, there's some, it's a passion. I love it. For me, it's like, you want to help people understand. You want to help people wake up. How are you going to do that? They need to understand the teachings. If they don't have the teachings, they're lost. They're victims. So that's why I brought it back. So this is a rare class in many ways, because not only are these teachers not not anywhere else, but you don't teach it that often at all. I mean, who knows? Maybe, right. you know, next year you won't even want to do it again. <laughs> right. That's what that's what will happen. Might, that's, <laughs> this might be the last time. But this next one is happening. When is the first class? The 24th? Uh, yes. 25th, 24th. Yeah. Yes. yes. June 24th. And if you want to sign up even after that, because I know last year I, I signed up, I missed the first <clears throat> class, but I watched the yeah. replay, of course. So right. if, if yeah. anybody, if you want to sign up later, it's still yeah. available. You'll get the replay. 
Um, so, you'll get all of it. So, yeah, you'll get all of it. You, even if you miss the first couple, even it doesn't matter. You can step in. You're still going to get all of the, the classes and you'll have to go through them. So you'll be up to speed with everything. And uh, but you can still join. You know, if you don't yeah. if you miss that first couple classes or whatever, you can still join. Absolutely. Oh, thank you so much, Bonnie, um, for well, everything that you do. I know the No I Self program is incredible. I took it and uh, the teachings in there has helped me so much. And uh, overall, you've helped me so much, Bonnie. Thank you. Everybody, the links are in the description below. So check it out and hope to see you in the class. Yep. Hope you're there.